Hi, I'm Elsa Britton. I'm here with the Canadian Clay and Glass Gallery, and today I'm going to teach you how to make ceramic charcuterie plates. So when we're making large slab forms, which is what a charcuterie plate is, we're going to want to make sure we are making nice large slabs, but we don't want them to be too thin. So I started by smushing the clay down with my hand and then flattening with a rolling pin, ensuring to flip it over every time so it doesn't get stuck. I'm rolling my slab out in two parts, which is good when you have small work surfaces. Um, you're going to roll it out and then you're going to scratch both sides with your serrated rib. You're going to add a little bit of water to um, one of the sides that you scratched. And then you can add your two pieces um, together after you've added this water. This just really makes sure they don't crack and that they don't fall apart. So I'm placing them scratch side um, touching, and now I'm using my palm to smush it out, and then I'm gonna use my finger to kind of flatten it. After we've flattened it with our finger, we're going to roll it out with a rolling pin, and now is a good time to figure out the shape I want. I like doing kind of wiggly organic shapes for these. I think they're pretty fun, but you can make any shape that you'd like. Now that I have cut my shape out, I'm gonna remove the excess, and I like to take that off my workstation and I'm just gonna add a little more flattening to it. I'm gonna flip it over now because there's a seam on the other side that I wanna get rid of, so I'm just using my finger to blend that out, and then I'm gonna go over one more time with the rolling pin. Since we rolled it out since originally cutting the shape, I'm gonna use my knife and I'm gonna redefine the shape that I've cut. I wanna make sure it's the exact uh, shape that I'd like. I'm now gonna use my sponge and I'm just gonna go around and I'm gonna smooth the edges. These pieces are gonna get covered in glaze, which is glass, so any sharp corners will be very sharp once they're covered, so I'm smoothing it out. I wanna add handles to mine, so I'm just rolling out a little coil um, that's gonna become the handle on my piece. After we've rolled it out, you're gonna to wanna to scratch both ends and then figure out where you wanna put it on your piece. So. Here I am figuring out where I want it, second guessing myself and then attaching it here. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add two more handles to it. I'm making kind of a funky little plate here. So we're gonna have three handles on this piece. So you can see I'm attaching one there and I'm attaching one over here now too. Now I wanna add a little dip bowl to it. So I've just rolled out a small ball of clay and I'm gonna put my thumb in it to make a tiny pinch pot going all the way around pinching. And when you make little fun bowls like this, I find it good to add a little divot in your plate so that they'll sit nice once everything is fired. Now for decoration, um, you can go ahead and just paint right onto the clay if you'd like, um, like a freehand painting thing. I'm painting a little circle here, um, but there's lots of different ways to decorate these pieces. So uh, what else you can do is take um, your sponge, uh, make sure it's dry and you can kind of dab this in the paint and then dab uh, off excess. And then you can go around and you create this kind of gradient effect, um, splatter effect. It's pretty nice and it gives it that organic feel as well. So this is what it looks like a little closer. Uh, we can also do stencils. So really easy at home stencils or just with paper. So I'm gonna keep it super simple right here. I'm just gonna cut out a rectangle shape that we're gonna use. Um, but I've also just taken a piece and cut two holes out of it just to show you. So I'm pushing it down to making, making sure it's making contact with the slab and then with the sponge. And when we're using stencils, you always should use the sponge kind of dabbing technique. I'm just going to apply paint where those holes are and you'll see you get a very crisp, clean shape, uh, by cutting out, um, holes in paper. Uh, you can do kind of the inverse of that. I'm going to put this rectangle down and I'm gonna use the sponge and dab all the way around the outside. Um, and then what you're gonna be left with is um, the negative space inside the paint you apply is gonna be the shape of whatever piece you lay down. So I'm just gonna use a little skewer to pick this up. And there we go, so you can see it's the inverse. Uh, if you're more about texture, lace is awesome, doilies are awesome, any kind of textured fabric, you're just gonna roll that right into the clay. You don't even need to apply much pressure to it. And then you see when we take it away, we have a nice um, kind of imprint of that. If you wanna make your own stamps, leave a piece of clay out to harden a little bit before you start making. And then you can carve into this. And then when you press this into your slab with whatever unique design that you want to make, it will leave um, the uh, opposite of the shape that you've cut out. If you have any actual stamps laying around your house, these are also totally good to use. Um, letter stamps are great uh, if you want to add text to it as well. So there you go. That's how you make a charcuterie plate.